104.5 the team we are joined by Giants offensive lineman Jeff Schwartz Schwartz when you look at this this game the AFC championship game Brady gets hit about 20 times there's been 40 different alignments of the offensive line should the O-line coach be held accountable because Dave uh, I can't even say the guy's last name but he's been let go I think it might be just because it's hard to pronounce his last name you know I think that Something else must have been going on behind the scenes because you know he got he got let go really fast. You know, I mean, they basically had not even got done reviewing the film of the game, and he was already out. Um, so something you know might have been brewing for a while there. I don't know if it's totally his fault. Uh, you know, injuries are tough to to you know to play through any position. They're young at guard, and you know they didn't play very well. So you know, you typically will have a, a scapegoat in a game like like that, and he was a scapegoat. Do you ever do you ever play with him as a coach at all? No, no, no. Can this Panthers line stop that Denver defensive front? That's a good question. Uh, the Panthers offensive line is probably the best uh, unit uh, who played on Championship Sunday. Uh, I think they did a great job neutralizing in Arizona. And Arizona has an excellent defensive line. They bring a lot of pressure. The Panthers did a great job of uh, you know kind of walking all up and letting Cam have all day to throw and. You know, that's Khalil and Trey Turner inside, and you know even Michael Orr, who kind of gets a bad rap that's had a good season. So, you know, they're going to try their best. And, and, and the difference in this game will be scheme a little bit, too, because Denver was able to rush the passer with just four guys, knowing that Tom Brady's not going anywhere. And when you rush Carolina, you have to rush a little different just because Cam Newton can get out and make you pay if you don't, you know, rush in your proper lane. So it'll be interesting to see how Denver approaches this. I think they're going to try to get pressure off the edges as usual and kind of inside just make their rushes so that if Cam Newton tries to step up and escape through the middle, that they have their guys ready to tackle him. Jeff Schwartz, offensive lineman in the New York Giants, brought to us by McLean Food Service right here on 104.5 The Team. Schwartz, you played for the Panthers. Like, as a guy who's, you know, played on a couple teams now, and I know, I know you love the Giants, do you sit there on your couch and go, man, I should have stayed in Carolina? <laughs> um, that was so long ago. That was five years ago now. You know, we had a new um, coaching staff when I got hurt, so I didn't even get to play with the new coaching staff. And, it, it, you know, if I had played that year in 2011, you know, I would have gotten an extension. They had everyone signed up. Uh, they had 20 guys going into that season. They had 20 of the 22 starters were assigned to long-term contracts. And uh, it was me and a safety who the safety made it through training camp and got a five-year deal, and I didn't. Ooh. That's what happened. So I don't really look at it like that, you know. I mean, they, they didn't want me, and I'm not going to stay in a place where the team doesn't want me. Uh, it wasn't really my choice to leave. They basically said, hey, you know, you're injured, and we don't want you anymore. So, uh, I, you know, I held, held on a little bit of spite for a little bit, but, you know, they have a new GM now who, who wasn't there when I went, you know, the guy who let me go. and I never really had a problem with their coaching staff. So, you know, I'm excited for a couple of buddies I have on the team, but I'm not, you know, overly rooting for Carolina. I don't want to see a good game on Sunday. There's some two Sundays. Now, all right, so so you were you just not a good fit there? Is that maybe what it was? Like, like as you as an offensive lineman, would you rather block for a guy who's in the pocket like a Manning or a guy who can roll out and scramble like a Cam? Well, Cam, Cam's doing both. He's staying in the pocket and he's scrambling, which is almost the best of both worlds, obviously. You know, when you have a guy like Eli or Payton or Tom Brady or you know even maybe a Big Ben, they're going to sit in the pocket and they're going to get rid of the ball, which is great for offensive linemen. Uh, you know, if you have a guy who's going to run and can't throw, then that's an issue. If you have a guy who can do both, like Cam or Russell Wilson, who sits in the pocket but also can run, I mean, it's never a bad thing. Uh, you never want to get beat, no matter what the situation is. A guy who who you know is a Cam Newton type or Russell Wilson, they're going to hold the ball a little bit longer than. A Tom Brady or you know or Manning brother, but you know to me my job's to block. Doesn't really matter who's back there. And you know to your question about fit, I don't have anything to do with it. I was uh, <laughs> I got hurt. They brought in a guy, take my spot. Uh, they signed a free agent and he played well. And I was kind of like, hey, we don't need you anymore. So just the way it goes, you know, for a while, like I said, I was upset about it. But I'm happy for you know my Ryan Quill is a good buddy of mine. I'm happy for him. And you know I'm excited to watch a good game. Have you spoken to new head coach Ben McAdoo yet? I have not. No. Are you are you docking him? You just don't you don't you don't want to talk to him yet. You don't want to like feel too comfortable. Uh, no one has talked to him. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I've what what do we talk about? Well, just you know the good old days when he was you know carefree OC and now he's going to be a hard ass head I mean, coach. I assume, I'm assuming at some point 
I heard from the new offensive line coach, whoever that ends up being. Uh, but I, I don't, you don't talk to your coach very much in the offseason. I mean, you know, your offensive line coach, you know, they check in on you and, and stuff like that, see how you're doing. But I really don't know what I would talk to Ben about. I mean, if I was in the facility, I'd go say hi and, you know, how you doing? And, you know, congrats. But he's not going to call me on the phone. I'm, I'm probably the, the close to the bottom of the list of guys you'd call. Schwartzo, you were out there, like, campaigning, campaigning for the guy. You had his back. What I said had nothing to do with him getting hired. <laughs> you don't think you're up there with Eli, where Eli's like, I want Ben, you know, they were, and they're like, well, Schwartz also wants Ben, that's two big votes for him? Yeah, I don't think that works that way. Uh, supposedly, Eli didn't even talk to ownership. I mean, they knew how he felt through comments in the media, but, um, you know, that, that doesn't work that way. Jeff Schwartz, offensive lineman of the New York Giants, brought to us by McLean Food Service, one half of the Block em Up podcast. Schwartz, oh, how's your ankle? Like, if one more person backs out of the Pro Bowl, can they call you up? Can you go play? I'm getting close to that, I think. I mean, we only need about seven more right guards to back out. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. No one wants to play in the game. They're, they're like, we're, we're, we're literally at the 13th, 14th quarterback now. Well, yeah, why, why don't players want to play in it? Why are these guys just backing out left and right? Um, Tyrod Taylor's a player in the Pro Bowl. Come on. Well, I know, and it's crazy because now you get to say you're a Pro Bowler. Um, <laughs> I think the older guys just <clears throat> just over it. I mean, it still counts as as being in the Pro Bowl. I think that the way the game is moving, less and less guys really care about it. I mean, I, I you know, if I made the Pro Bowl, of course I'd go. But I think some of the older guys, Tom Brady and Philip Rivers, and guys who have made it before doesn't change their legacy at all if they go or don't go they're still pro bowlers are you interested yeah. in it are you gonna watch it i watch football i don't probably won't watch much of it i i, and I don't have a i don't have a problem with the pace of the game either i'm not one of these guys who thinks that this game it's an ex first of all it's an exhibition game uh you know some guys just got done playing last week uh some guys haven't played in four weeks uh you know it's like a first preseason game you said guys that haven't that just played 16 games um, to just go out and try to kill themselves again, I don't expect that. Um, I think I do think that, I do think it picks up in the fourth quarter, but I think people need to temper their expectations for this game. I mean, it is what it is now, and I'm okay with that. I'll watch a little bit of it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to sit on the couch and watch the Pro Bowl. But as a guy who played at Oregon, you got to love the the flashy new jerseys they've been breaking out for this thing, right? I don't even recall them. I'm sure that. By the way, it's Oregon, not Oregon. <laughs> Well, I, I'm, a New a York, I'm an upstate New Yorker. What do you want from me? That's a huge pet peeve of mine. It's or it's G O N gone. Yeah. It's or Oregon. I'm with you, Jeff. The Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you play the Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail? <laughs> you played the Oregon Trail. By the way, that game is fantastic. You know, you can find it on the on the computer. Like, if you search Google, someone managed to put all the games on the computer. I ran through. I played in like you can play like ten minutes. I just got through. I went. 18 oxen, full speed. Told people would buy the dysentery, but I made it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the only game where like you get dysentery and you're like, nah, well that happens. Well, you have you have all you need is oxen and guns and food, and you just go. You don't even need medicine. Everybody can die. You see one person to make it to win. <laughs> Jeff Schwartz, Giants offensive lineman. Oregon uh, Trail expert uh, right here with us. Uh, Eli Manning up for the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Do is, is, you have any like terrible stories about Eli that we can circulate and, uh, and and just sink his whole campaign? I wish. No, I don't wish that at all. <laughs> I know you no, don't. I, have, I mean, Eli, Eli is awesome. I can't even, I mean, he, he, he was in an event that I was at. This is how professional he is in doing this. So it was an um, Operation Smile event. I was there. One of my good friends was being honored for her work. And Eli came and spoke, and he had practiced the speech one time. He did it before doors opened up. And he got on stage, and you would have thought that he had practiced the speech for four weeks. He nailed it. And then he just left. He bounced. Good for him. But he, he, he's great. I'm glad he's up for this award. I know he does great stuff in the community, and, and I hope he wins. It just, I think it just shows you, you know, the Giants organization, you know, your quarterback, your leader, the guy everyone looks up to, Super Bowl champion, is up for an award for an outstanding work in the community. And that's everything you want in, um, in, a, in, a, in a quarterback. Does it help you do your job? I mean, obviously you're a professional. You're going to block up and smack people around no matter what. But it, does it help you do your job when you sincerely like your quarterback the way it, you clearly do, Eli? Yes. 
just on a personal level, you're like, you're not hitting my boy. Well, I think that there's there's a um, just a, a chemistry thing. You, you've seen it in certain other places where quarterbacks get hit and no one picks them up. Yeah. Right? I mean, right. yeah, you can see that. It doesn't mean you block any any less any less for a quarter guy you don't like, but you're not running out of your way to go pick him up when he's gets sacked. Jeff Schwartz, offensive lineman of the New York Giants, brought to us by McLean Food Service. Uh, what's going on with the Block Em Up podcast? We just got a new one. It just got put up a couple minutes ago. Um, we um, we you know we review the game uh, the games from last weekend. We talked. We BS a little bit. I had a car stolen out of my driveway. What uh, here in Charlotte? So yeah, so that, I talk about that on the podcast. I'm gonna tease that. You just go visit the podcast. And listen, <laughs> it's on iTunes and it's on. Um, Stitcher and it's on Podbean, and uh, we had over almost close to thirteen thousand listens on Podbean alone for the last uh, episode. So things are going well. Uh, it's been fun to kind of share my thoughts and, and you know Duke obviously and do some fun interviews, and we have a good time with it. Who steals from a giant, a literal giant, not just a player on the team, a guy who's like ten feet tall? Who steals from you? They caught him too. It's all on okay. the podcast. Oh my god! All right, I gotta you look at you. All right, you've learned. <laughs> I'm gonna, well, let me make sure. Let me make sure it wasn't you. Know, I, I'm learning how to edit these eventually, so let me let me just make sure that it's still that it's there. Well, all right, but if it's I... not, you better call back and tell us exactly what happened because I'm sending everybody to block my podcast now. <laughs> oh no, it's still on there. Okay. Yeah, it's on there. So go ahead. All right, <laughs> very cool, Jeff Schwartz. Thanks for making time. And uh, next uh, next week, maybe we can do this live. Right on the show, you sit down across from me, and we talk football. It won't be Tuesday though. You can't do Tuesday. Yeah. Come on, I'm man. not going to be. In, I won't be in in San Francisco then. All right. Well, listen. You, I'm. You're the big old football star. Whatever you want, you come in, sit down, and we'll talk sports. Probably Thursday. All right, Thursday it is. Yeah. Done, All right, guys. Jeff Schwartz, thank you so much, man. You're a great guy. Take care.